we're so focused in this industry on the patient's always right. You have to treat the patient right. You know, you have to make it right for the patient. For us, you have to treat your team right. Otherwise, you're never going to get right with your patient. If you treat the team well, they are going to love and treat the patients well. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Orthopreneurs, to another episode of the Orthopreneurs Podcast. And today, we have a much anticipated kind of lecture today, not a lecture, an interview with Amanda Floyd. Amanda, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I think I was just just telling a friend, you and I have been friends for years, and um, this is my first time to be invited on this podcast. So I've been anxiously awaiting this day. For those of you who don't know Amanda Floyd, she is, and, and I cover your ears for a moment. I don't want you to have to hear this. She's one of the most respected people for systems, policies uh, in, in all of orthodontics. And it's impossible to ever talk about the success of the entire Fish Fine organization without mentioning Amanda's name in the same sentence. And you should know that, Amanda, that out there, when everybody talks about what a remarkable leader, what a remarkable organization Ben has built, the next line is, yeah, and Amanda is amazing too. So everybody everybody knows the pivotal role you played in the success of the organization. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. And best of all, I am so excited to have you speaking at Orthopreneur Summit later this year. Uh, and sharing your knowledge. You and Ben have shared the stage, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Yeah, we were in Denver, 2021. Yeah. It was amazing. And now you're going to get to throw down some knowledge. Very excited to be, uh, you know, just to be invited back. Orthopreneurs in 2021, we spoke in Denver and I told many people after, I think I said it on, on, a, on a video after, but hands down, the best conference I've ever been to, the energy at this conference is unmatched. Um, and, you know, we we host our own conference and we took so many ideas from you and your conference and what you guys have put together and, you know, just try to get better from that. But if, you know, for an orthodontic team, there's no other place that you can go that's anything like orthopreneurs, not in our industry. Well, thank you. It means a lot coming from I mean you. that. I, mean, I know you do. And I appreciate it. It means the world to me. And so um, let's jump into business a little bit here because... For those of you who don't know much about Amanda's story, it's pretty remarkable. She's a remarkable woman, and what she does uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is incredible. I'm I'm thrilled to call her a partner of mine in Smile Doctors. Uh, you guys affiliated with Smile Doctors. My guess is early 21, June of 2020. So, if you don't mind, take you know 60 to 90 seconds and just give everybody a little bit about your origin story. How did you end up? being where you are now, doing what you're doing now, you know, how did this path begin and, and what sort of drove you on the journey? You know, I, I got into this industry this month will be 25 years, uh, crazy enough. I have wow. uh, been in the orthodontic industry for 25 years this month. And uh, I started in Arkansas, worked for 10 years in a practice there as a clinical assistant and then a clinical manager. We moved down here. Uh, I took a year off to homeschool my daughter her last year of, of school, and um, I found a little practice in Pensacola, tiny little practice. It was producing just right at $800,000 a year. I think there were six employees. Uh, I came in as a clinical assistant. I was really excited to kind of take a step back and just really have a, I don't know what I would call an eight to five job, just, you know, not a lot of headache, not a lot of stress. And a year later, uh, ben bought the practice. We hit it off pretty to start. Um, we have a synergy between us, and you could tell early on that we really worked well together. So about a year after he bought the practice, uh, I had I'd come to him and said, "Hey, you know, I want to go part time. I want to do marketing. You know, I just want to work two days a week." And I had this side business I was working, and it was pretty successful. I was like, you know, I'm just really going to take a step back. And he he said, okay. And a few days after that, he was like, listen, I really need a manager. We had seven employees at this point, right? I need a manager. I, I can't afford to give you any money. You know, I can't give you a raise, but I need a manager. And so I thought about it. He had this five-year goal to be a $5 million practice. And I loved, you know, his energy and his goals. And I thought, I could really help him with it. And so the rest is history. I mean, we he he gave me basically no boundaries outside of keep overhead under 60% and do what you need to do. Hey, keep overhead did. under 60% is a pretty loose uh, suggestion, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and from there, for those people who don't know the whole story, when you affiliated with Smile Doctors, how many team members did you have at that point? We had about 98, just under 100, I think, when we affiliated. We're about 115 now. And for those of you out there who have not heard Ben Fishbein's 
podcast interview, I would strongly recommend you listen to that as well because you're going to see both sides of this conversation because he'll always tell you that his wife said that he did 30 years in seven years, right? He did 30 years of practice stuff in seven years. And so everything we're talking about here when you affiliated was about seven years, right? Mm -hmm. From inception yes, exactly. to affiliation. And at that point, you'd gone from literally zero, I mean, figuratively zero yes. to seven. Did you have six or seven practices at that point? We had eight. You had eight practices, eight practices. I mean, close to a hundred employees. You know, our, our biggest year, we were at 27 million. Uh, our, you heard our that right, people. Year. 27 and million. We do okay. We we are able to provide full time employment to so many people, and that is the best part of this journey. Yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> we're doing, we're doing, okay. doing better. Well, it's your humility and your drive are amazing. Um, but yeah, but twenty seven million dollars. You go from zero to twenty seven million dollars with, might I add, great culture, great culture, um, which I would argue, and we'll talk more about it, drives your organization is the culture and all the great organizations that I've ever been around in Ortho are driven completely by culture. I mean, right. I'm going to throw, throw another name out there right now, just because very different practice style, very different practice style, but very successful. And the kind of person people know is Stu Frost. Mm -hmm. uh, Stu Frost is a good friend. I've been in his practice more times than I can count. And that practice is driven by culture. People think of the ortho that he provides, but if you go in that practice, there's love, there's love. There's just love. Everybody loves each other. And the same thing, when you walk in the Fishbein Fundamentals, where you just go visit the Fishbein practices, it is incredible how the feel is exactly the same as what you feel when you walk into Frost, Frost Ortho or that's a huge compliment. Frost and Nichols. You guys are built on loving one another. I mean, that's the, if you give one word about what makes you guys successful, it's the love you, you have. And so seven years, $27 million, eight practices, 100 employees, well run. Um, let's go back to the beginning, right? Let's go back to the beginning. When I had some challenges in my practice and we were about 40 employees for me and Doug, I called you and you, or you Zoomed and you showed me your organizational hierarchy and how you ran your office when you had 40 people. And we implemented that. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced at the beginning? What were some of the bigger challenges you faced as you grew? And what were some of the biggest challenges you faced when you really got to that you know, scaled 15, $20 million, which again, you can count on one hand the number of practices doing $25 million a year. Bigger challenges when we started out for sure was finding the right people. So we had one year where we went from, you know, when I started managing, we had grown that smaller practice to 2 million. I started managing in October of 2015. So the next year we did four and a half million in, in, in the next year. Well, one year after that, we went from four and a half million to 11.7 million. Oh my gosh. And it was so unexpected for both of us. It was so, it just happened so quickly that we didn't have the people, right? We didn't have enough people. And the one thing that we both, you know, we were very intentional about early on was hiring the right people. We did not want to hire just to fill seats. We wanted to hire people that really shared the same values and, and could get behind this vision that we had. And you know, I think that was a pivotal year for us because we saw, you know, if you can go from from four to 11 in one year, can you imagine what you can do in two or three? And so we saw pretty early on from that point that, okay, we, we're we on to something. We know a little bit about how to uh, grow. And so we figured, okay, we can, we can make this scalable and we can do the same thing that we've done in these three locations. Let's open a couple more, hire a couple more doctors. But getting the team in place, when you go from four to 11, you can't hire people that quickly and have them at the level that you need to, to serve in all these positions. So when Ben's wife says, you know, he did 30 years in seven years, that's no joke. S same here. You know, we were putting in 60 hour weeks because we just didn't have enough people. Uh, I, at one point, I think I was the office manager, marketing person, TC. Uh, I was running some finance, working front debt, wherever we needed to be, that's where we were. But what we did was we started hiring people. Uh, we would we found out for us what worked and we have stuck with the same thing since 2015 was referring friends. If we saw someone in the community that gave us great service at a restaurant or at a tanning salon, it's a joke here locally in Pensacola that we uh, hired every team member from this certain tanning salon. 
because they were great. They would give us great service. Um, but we hired so many people like that. And what happened was Dr. Ben, myself, Brittany, we found these first few people from, you know, from these businesses. And then we would tell these people, hey, let your friends know we're going to give a referral bonus to people. We want, we want like-minded people. So what we found was, you know, if we like this person, they tend to have friends that we will probably mesh well with as well. And we've done that. We've done organic uh, hiring since 2015. We've never gone back. Um, it's wonderful. And if, and if I could interrupt for a second there, yes, because, because I want to just add to that. She's done organic hiring since what year? 2015. So make a note, people. They don't run ads. No. Nope. Right? There's no ads. You're not going to see a Facebook ad. You're not going to see an Indeed ad. They got to over 100, 115 employees, team members, without ads. Think about that for a second. Now, if you're like me, you, your reflexive response is going to immediately jump to reasons why they can do it and you can't. Oh, they're in, they're in Pensacola. They're in a, it's total BS. You're, you're selling yourself a line. If you walk in their office and understand the culture and the way they run things, you'll understand how they're able to do it. So people tell us now, oh, it's so easy for you. You have 100 people. We've hired this way since we had 10 people. The very first three people we hired were Casey, who's my daughter, Nancy Kelly, who Dr. Ben knew from a previous position, and then Brittany Svoboda, who's our director of operations, and we owe so much of our our success to her. Uh, I, you know, I think the two of us get a lot of credit, but Brittany, in her in her own right, is has been huge. You know, in our success and growth, those were the first three hires, so they were all organic. Uh, we ran an Indeed one time, an Indeed ad in 2015, and the candidates we got from that ad were less than ideal. We hired one person, and we ended up having a let her go three days later. And I was like, look, this isn't how we're doing this. I would rather work short staff than to hire people that we know we're going to have to let go later, or we're going to have to accept that they just don't have the right feel. And for us, it's a feel. We sit across from someone in an interview and, and we get a feeling of, is this the right person for this team? Yes or no? Do they fit in with, with what we're doing here? Yes or no? Those were challenges early on and they're still challenges now, right? Finding the right people, and, and like you and I were talking about offline and getting them in the right seats, those, that's the most important thing about what we do. And I think in, in this industry, people forget that. Uh, you know, we're so focused in this industry on you, the patient's always right. You have to treat the patient right. You know, you have to make it right for the patient. And I think that I might be an outlier in saying, no, that's not actually right. For us, you have to treat your team right. You have to get it right with your team. Otherwise, you're never going to get right with your patients. If you treat the team well, they are going to love and treat the patients well. And so that's what we did, you know, from year one. There was once someone in the office who who said to the team, the the order is patients always come first, mm -hmm. team is second. The next morning I was in the office and I just turned over and I said, Okay, time out. Forget what you were told yesterday. Right. Okay. It's team first always. Patients right. come second always. Exactly you guys right. are always first. If you are insulted by a patient, if there's a conflict between you and a patient, you're getting the benefit of the doubt always right. first and have got your back. But that means there's a certain level of behavior and certain level of expectation there is. But yeah, totally. And so I have to go back for a minute because you went from 4.4 to 11.7. Was that the number? How in this planet did you go 7 million more in one year unexpectedly? What happened? We opened two locations. We hired one associate. So we hired Sarah, who also, Dr. Sarah Howell, instrumental in our success and growth. You know, we have a, a core group of people and Dr. Sarah is at, at the pinnacle and Brittany Savota. And I said this earlier, but, you know, Ben and I get a lot of credit for this, but there are, there are other people right beside us that were just as important and just as instrumental and, you know, put just as many uh, of these little bricks into place to build this. But we opened, we met Sarah. And we, at this point, were still so small, we didn't think we could afford an associate. And to be honest, we couldn't. Okay, just just putting that out there. We could not afford an associate. We had opened one location because we wanted to see if we could. And I remember sitting across from the CPA. And I don't know, I mean, you know Ben really well, Glenn, but he's just kind of hands off. He's always been that way. He is a visionary. He is an idea person. And his ideas are, are genius. But he's not an implementer. That's me, right? So he's the idea person. All of the ideas are his. And then I just figure out a way to make them happen. He wanted to have another office and he knew where he wanted it to go. And so I said, okay, let's do this. And I remember sitting across from the CPA and I said, listen, I'm really nervous about this. 
we don't have a lot of money. Like we had to take a loan out for this first de novo, right? And we didn't have a lot of money at this point. And I said, I, I just need to know if this de novo fails, will it ruin us completely or will we still be okay with our main location? That's all I need to know. And he said, nope, you're good. Even if you are in the red for two, three years with this de novo, you're still going to be okay because you have enough in your main location. My fear was, are we going to be able to pay these people that trust us, that earn a paycheck? And and remember, at this point, there's only 10 of them. But still, it was very concerning to me. One of them was my daughter. And so I said, okay, we can do this. Well, we opened that de novo in September 2016. And within a year, this office that we opened was producing a million on one day a week. And so I was like, wow, okay, this, this I mean, we were in, in the black within two months, probably. So at this same point that we opened this location, we met Dr. Sarah. She wanted to move to this area, which is pretty rare. You know, we found that since then that most orthodontists are not looking to move to Pensacola, Florida. Uh, and she wanted to move here. And we we ended up saying, okay, you know what? We really want her. She she and, and Ben and I, our energy just really meshed so well together. We knew that she was the next piece of this puzzle. Like gut instinct knew that she was the person we needed, even though we couldn't afford her and we couldn't afford to make her a great offer. And so she took a risk on us too because we couldn't afford to make her a good offer. And um, anyway, we hired her. She was fi finishing residency in Michigan and, and we had about a year and or maybe nine months until she was going to be able to join us. And if you know Dr. Sarah, that's just how she is. She was a year out of residency, already planning for what comes next. I need to know. I need all of my ducks in a row. And that's that's how she operates. That's why her and Ben work so well together, because he's the opposite of that. He's like, let's go. Let's figure it out later. Let's do this and figure it out later. Dr. Sarah on the other side is you know, coming behind us saying, okay, here's the steps that we need to make these things happen. Anyway, when we fired her, we knew we need one more location to to have them both work four days a week. So we went ahead and opened another de novo and uh, we did the exact same thing we did the first one. We looked for the same type of location, the same spot. We put in the same floor plan. We put in the same, you know, furniture that I ordered off Amazon, mind you, because we had no money. And, you know, the rest is that year, I think it was, yeah, 2017, Dr. Ben worked solo from January through June. And then Sarah joined us in July. And that year between the two of them, which was really one and a half full-time providers, right? They produced a little over 11. Wow. Not okay. just that though. We started taking all the insurance, right? We signed up with every insurance. We started marketing pretty hardcore. Prior to that point, we hadn't been marketing much. We started dedicating 12% of our budget to marketing, 12% of collections. 12%. 12% of collections went to marketing. We went direct to consumer with marketing, which had never been done. Like we hadn't done it before. We were out. I mean, I, I can tell you, I was probably out at least somewhere every single day, not just to dental offices, though. I would go into local businesses and I would take them these cars that we made, like, you know, neighborhood. We call them, we still use them to this day. They're great. We call them our, our um, welcome to the neighborhood cards or, or neighborhood, you know, friends and family, whatever kind of cards. And I would go into these local businesses and I would take them cookies and these cards and like, hey, we're opening this office down the road. We want to be able to offer, you know, you and your clients um, an introductory special, like whatever. I, I mean, it was like nail salons, hair salons, gyms. I would go to every restaurant. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's kind of it. Oh, oh, also, that's the same point that we went flexible with financing. We took out every barrier that we had prior and we took it all out and started from scratch with financing. It's amazing. I mean, just the numbers are insane to go from four point, oh, whatever, I, I I've already beaten that to death. It's crazy. You guys should be so proud of what you've accomplished. Thank you. Um, let's transition a little bit into uh, Fishbine Fundamentals because we sit here, we talk about culture, we talk about production, we talk about all these great things that you've done as an organization and as leaders. And then you attend Fishbine Fundamentals, you get to see it in action. Uh, I've been through it twice, brought a lot of our Orthopreneurs RD members, right? I think we've had two sessions just for us. I think one had like 70 people and the other... 60 or 70 as well. It was great. My question for you is when you started with Fishbine Fundamentals, what was your goal and has that changed at all since you started doing it? When we started with Fishbine Fundamentals, to be honest, it was twofold. One of the reasons was we we did grow so quickly and it was kind of one of those, you know, success stories that people love to see. And so, and and you know, Dr. Ben, he's so he's just so humble and generous. And if you text him and say, Hey, I want to sleep by your office. 
and see how you guys are operating. He's like, okay, sure. Come on down. And I am very, you know, my calendar is blocked every day. I, I need routine and I need things to be in order. And I need, you know, I love all of the fun stuff, but like in its time and place. So there were, there were weeks that we would have uh, two visitors show up on the same day. I had no idea they were even coming. Um, and this happened multiple times. So I'm like, listen, we've got to, we've got to figure out how do we do this better? This one fundamentals was his brainchild. He came up with all of it. So he came up with the conference and he wanted basically a way that we could streamline the people coming and wanted to see what we were doing and how we were doing it. How do we let them see the office part of things like in office, follow a console, do all these things, but also really have a chance to talk to them about, you know, how and what and why. Um, the other bigger piece of it when we started doing one-on-ones and, you know, um, virtual trainings and all the things that we do now, because it is involved in the, a much bigger animal than we had ever anticipated. But early on, you know, my background, I, I had no management training whatsoever. When I started managing for, for Dr. Ben, I didn't know how to run a report. This is a true story. I had no idea. I didn't know how, I didn't know anything about Excel or PowerPoint. I was a clinical assistant in TC prior to this, so I didn't know how to do anything. And um, there was there was really nowhere for me to learn outside of YouTube and Google. And, you know, I had a couple of friends in the industry um, that I would call that I just met at conferences. So the first thing we did, we started going to conferences and I would make friends and make contacts. And anytime I would need help, I would call them. I'm like, hey, how do you know what kind of reports to to run on a weekly basis or a monthly basis? How do I put these things in place? Because prior to that, we had never had a, re a report ran in our office. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to have a place that new managers or new TCs or people new to the marketing role could come and feel like they were getting really good training that they could take back and, um, you know, feel like they had something to, or, or somewhere to go. You get a lot more than something. There's a lot. Thank you. It's really, really good. And like I said, I've been there twice. Um, I cannot um, endorse it strongly enough. I think no matter what kind of practice you have, you might have a one doc, million and a half dollar a year practice, a uh, high high fee, low volume. Um, you could have five offices doing 12, 15 million a year. No matter what you, you're looking for, you'll find it there because the culture, as I said, drives everything. And I think that comes through. And yeah, it's great to come through your room of marketing stuff where you show all the ways you market with everybody. That's amazing. Seeing how the office runs and looking at the organizational hierarchies and watching your team, you know, your clinical assistants in action. I mean, all of that's great, but, you know, running through everything is the culture. I would tell anybody out there who's struggling with their practice, look first at your culture, mm -hmm. right? Because if there's no culture, everything else is just total BS. Right. Yeah. And, and the best thing about doing these podcasts, and I strongly recommend to everybody out there to have a podcast if they can find the time or if they enjoy it. The best thing about this podcast is before you go on air, you get to talk to people beforehand, you get to chat. And the conversation we had beforehand, just about culture and core values and the right people in the right seat, it just, it's so great to be able to share these conversations with people who I respect as much as you do. I do you, Amanda. So it, it all starts with culture. If there's one takeaway from this entire conversation here today, people, and if you get the Fishbine Fundamentals, you'll see it is culture that comes from the perfect yin yang of you and Ben Fishbein, in my opinion. Because again, I can't say that I know both of you extremely well, but I've, I've spent enough time with both of you where I see you as very different people. Do I have that right? Very different. We are as opposite as opposite can be, but we complement each other very well. From outwardly, yeah, I do see a lot of opposites there. But the one thing I think both of you have in common is you both got a killer instinct deep inside. You both, neither one of you can tolerate failure. In my opinion, and it's true. We are we are both very much ad averse to that, and we are, you know, we love a goal. We are a little competitive. Um, we're both a lot competitive, uh, but we both do see the value in our people, and that's um, that's rare to find. You know, someone that you can partner with so well that at, at your core you share these values. Um, and the, and the thing that I love the most about Ben is he he truly does see the best in every person. Such a great guy. He, you know, and and to be had to have been in this industry for so long and to have served so many patients and to still get up every day and be able to in any situation see the very best 
and just assume best intent from every encounter and every person that he comes across in his day to day. And that's true. I mean, I know him outside of my husband and my family. I probably know him better. Like he's my closest friend in this world um, outside of my husband and my family. I, I don't have a closer friend than him. If anything happens to me, that's the friend that I call. Um, so he knows every detail of my life, pretty much. If, if an issue happens, uh, he's the person I call. He's my first phone call. We joke. And so like, I, I know him that well. And he is that person that people see. They say, oh, he's so humble. And he's so, you know, he's so generous. He truly is. And you illustrated another point that I made on podcast number one with my partner, Doug Shaw. If you're going to be partners with somebody, and let's be honest, you're partners. The two of you are partners. Yeah. No, we are. You, you might not both be orthodontists, but you're partners. Every successful partnership has to be based on friendship. Right. If there's no, I, people say trust, people say, you know, common values, mm -hmm. same mission, and those are important. If you're not friends, like right. people write to me all the time, hey, Glenn, I'm thinking about doing a partnership, blah, 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 and I, get, I just say, are you two friends? Yeah. Well, no. I say, then don't do it. Do you enjoy being around each other? Because that's a must. Do you invite each other to each other's homes? Right. Do, you, when, do you pick up the phone and just call each other to say hi? Mm -hmm. Right. And every successful partnership I know is based on friendship. If it's not, and it's just based on money. Like if you're, if you're out there and you, you know, you've got a practice and there's somebody else in the neighborhood who has a practice, you guys are thinking of becoming partners. I hear that all the time. But you know, you kind of know each other, but you're not friends. Right. Don't do it. Right. No, yeah. Become friends first. Confident. Go out, play racquetball, go to the rodeo. Yeah. I don't know, go deep sea fishing, do something together, get to know each other, and then build a friendship over a year or two. Mm -hmm. And if you're still best friends, right. they join. That's because the way you talk about Ben is the way Ben talks about you, is the way I talk about Doug. Right, it's the way the most endearing, wonderful relationships happen. It's based on friendship, not on mission, exactly. and that's where people, I think, get caught up a lot. As we start winding down here a little bit, a couple of more questions for you. You talk, you know, we've talked so much about culture and the people in your organization that you don't hire through Indeed. Okay, now let's step outside of Fishbine Land, right, Floyd Land, and and let's go down to the common orthodontist on the street, like myself, where I practice in Dallas. Finding people is nearly impossible. Um, it's it's really, really tough. And there's a lot of orthodontists out there like myself who said, look, I've been struggling. You know, I just had a team member yesterday. She's going to go back to school. I um, had another one take a job in oil and gas. Mm -hmm. You know, but dental assisting is a tough gig. It's not easy. And a lot of people get into it and later decide this isn't for me anymore. Mm -hmm. so we're always running at a bit of a shortage. When you try to give out the referral bonus to people and Either there's just not good people coming in, right? Or there's just not enough people. What what advice do you give people? Is say, look, I'm just struggling shorthanded and I'm having a hard time getting people. I'm just having a hard time. And I, I just know that if I could get the right people, we could develop that culture, but I just can't get the right people. What would you tell them? You know, I still think it goes back to, you You said earlier, you collect people like I collect people. We love we love people. We said this offline, I think. This yeah, was we said it beforehand. Yeah, and if I meet someone and I think they're a great fit for this team, even if I'm not hiring, I'm still hiring them. I will hire them if I don't have a spot for them. And that's why throughout all this COVID, post-COVID, the blow up of 2021 in our industry and everybody having these explosive years to last year, you know, the market going down, we have not, knock on wood, um, we're short staffed through any of this because we have always, I mean, since early, early on, tried to stay overstaffed. And so that's that's where I would start. I would say, you know, people focus so much on, oh, I can't afford another clinician. I mean, how much does it really cost to hire another clinician? Right. We can work a little harder, a little more efficiently. We can we can hire another clinician, stay a little overstaffed when you meet great people. Offer them the opportunity so you're not having to scramble when you are short staffed uh, to to you know to find people. If you can build something that the best way you're going to find people, and even in this shortage that we have in our industry, we are not struggling to find people. We're still interviewing people on a weekly basis, and we don't advertise because our team at this point they are direct marketers for us. This is the best organic marketing you can get. Every time we put on an event, every time we have anything fun for our team. They post about it. They're not saying, hey, come join our team. They're saying, this is the coolest thing ever. I can't believe we did this. This is so fun. So people are seeing that on their social media. 
We encourage yeah. our team, please share. The best thing, you know, when people say thank you, like our team members are saying, thank you so much for putting this on. I mean, you guys are the best company. We're like, hey, you want to thank us? Please share how amazing this job is, how much you love it. Share it on your social media. The other thing I would say is, you know, that's a that's a longer term solution. People working short staff right now, figure out how you can become a little more efficient. Almost everyone can become a little more efficient in the day to day, so that being short staffed doesn't hurt as much. I agree. I, I I've been screaming that, and that's a large part of Orthopreneur Summit. Yeah. Is that I'm trying to help people recession proof their practices. Exactly. That's the goal. That's yeah. the theme of this year's meeting is recession proof your practice. Because if a recession comes, you know you don't have to lay people off if you're using technology. Exactly. Right. It changes the game and it saves you money. I mean, there's there's so many things you, you're. You know, you're privy to some of the technology I'm trying to develop yeah, right now I to do. to do some of that stuff. And you know, I I want to I want to go back to um, something you're doing now, which is coaching. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about that because I know we don't have a lot of time left, and I want to make sure we get this in there. Talk a little bit about what you're doing, and I know you're very selective with it. You you know, people just can't call you up and say, "Hey, Amanda, can you come coach me?" Um, I know you're very selective with who you take on, um, but I think people out there would love to hear a little bit about it. You know, we offer the co- the conference. We have about four a year, and they do stay. They then they're sold out. We're sold out until next May for the conference, and so it's one of those things where people are, hey, how do we get in sooner? How do we get in sooner? Uh, so we offer one on one team member training where you can bring um, as many people as you want. We post it up to twenty four in one day. And we post it as few as you know one or two. Uh, we do it almost on a weekly basis. We host a, a new team. They come down. Our senior leaders spend the day with them. We we have a full patient day. We hang out together. We get a lot of information on the front end of what are your specific challenges. What do you need help with? What are you hoping to get out of this? And then we we want to deliver. We want to give them the absolute best experience they can possibly have. That's called our one-on-one training. Outside of that, we also offer virtual one-on-one training, which is very similar. We just do it virtually. Um, but the private coaching that you're talking about is um, it's working personally with me. It's a three-month commitment. Um, and like you said, I I am a little more selective on that because it is a lot of time from me. And so if I'm going to commit three months to working with someone, much like we are selective about the people we hire into our practice, I'm very selective about the people that we take on to do private coaching because I need to be able to feel like I vibe with that person to authentically lead them. If I, if I don't have a good relationship with them, I don't think that I could could provide much value um, in, on a longer term basis because it, it wouldn't be you know as as authentic and and easy. So. Um, yeah, but it's a three month commitment. I go to their practice. I spend a couple of days. They bring, you know, uh, how, however many people to our practice. We do uh, biweekly coaching, you know, virtual trainings for the whole team. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then they have um, access to our other our other team members, our, you know, marketing director and our our TC director and uh, clinical operations. So it's a it's a lot of fun. We we started it loosely in 2019, and I took on a couple of clients and I really enjoyed it. I cut it out for 2020 just because of you know the lack of travel and not being able to um, to safely travel. And we picked it back up in 21. So we, we have a lot of fun with it. You're such a wealth of information. I'm so excited to have you at Summit. And for everybody again, for everybody out there, um, first of all, Fishbine Fundamentals. We'll have a booth at Summit. So yeah. you have the opportunity to it swing by. Very first time. Yeah, first time they're ever exhibiting anywhere. So yeah. I'm excited about. It. I'm flattered and excited, and uh, I have no doubt you'll be overwhelmed once you get hey, through that. We are so excited. And obviously, if you're not registered for Summit yet, what are you waiting for? I mean, come on, opsummit2023.com. The room block as of the recording of this is 90% full. You can still get rooms after it closes, but you just pay more for it, and the fee is going to end up going up anyway. So sign up at opsummit2023.com. No reason you shouldn't be there. You get to see Amanda along with some remarkable speakers. And the whole curriculum is not willy-nilly. It's not like, just, I want to be clear about this, Amanda, so people don't, I want them to understand the behind the scenes of how, how these meetings happen. People don't write to me and say, hey, I want to be on your stage. People oh. out there have. And, and I say, that's great. A, send me video of you speaking. And B, what exactly are you going to talk about? The truth of the matter is every person on that stage is personally chosen by me with very few exceptions. And I couldn't have been prouder when you said yes, that you would do it because I know what you bring to the table. 
And I know the value you're going to give people at that meeting. A lot, and again, along with, I mean, just the names I could throw out there of people who are going to be speaking. I mean, just have you ever seen Victor Antonio? I have He's, not. I'm so excited for the lineup this year. Though. Yeah. Victor Antonio spoke last year. He was so highly, he's like the king of sales. And I don't mean like a cheesy king no, of sales. I love that. He was so well received last year as a keynote that we said, I got to bring him back. I mean, I just, and so he's going to do something brand new to help increase conversion rate. I mean, like the amount of money someone should make, if you just measure it in money and not culture, the amount of money people are going to make from Victor Antonio and his talk, it's going to pay for a summit 20 times over. That's you know, the great thing about Summit is it's it is going to Summit alone, your practice is going to grow. You're going to take so many tools home from that that you can easily implement the next day, the next week. Very incredible, incredible knowledge. I, we took so much from, from the 2021 that we attended. Uh, we we sat there in Denver taking notes on the different... Anil, um, was it Anil? Anil gave me a good roasting that day. Me too. It was so funny that he used tanning salon because I'm like, you don't even know. We took like half of our staff from a tanning salon. But uh, we had so many great takeaways from that. But this whole time for the last hour, and I think every time you and I talk, we talk so much about culture and, and people and loving people. And you know, our thing is like, if you love people, focus on people first. Everything else is going to fall into place. The, the great thing about the OP Summit is it's both. You take your team there, it is going to be the best time. You guys make sure that that is the best conference. Your team is going to feel, because it's next level, right? Like I remember sitting out there and then throwing out like, I can't remember what it was that they threw out at one intermission. And it was like so unexpected, just little gifts that people take home. The level of the things that your team get, it just feels like such a unique, fun experience for the team. So that alone is going to help drive culture. But then to pair that with these takeaways, it pays for itself. We take our team to as many things like that as we can because we know that's how you build a great culture. It, it You need these things. Well, I appreciate it. And you know, I don't want to leave anybody out, so I'm going to try to run through it really fast. I don't know how many people you know. Jeff Hines, amazing, amazing guy. Courtney Dunn, uh, she's going to be there. Matt Lights, who yes, you, you don't know Matt Lights. He does the bots, chat bots and bot builders. Okay. Or um, Grant Cardone is one of the top people oh, in the yeah. world. That's Matt Light. He's going to be talking about it. He's unveiling a product that's going to be ridiculous for orthodontics. Awesome. It's going to be crazy. John Pobans, no. Mark Farina, another Floridian. Mark Farina went solo from having an associate and doubled his production. I see his production. So he's one of my opposite that I lead. And I'm always like, Mark, can you teach us? Teach me your yeah. Mark teach is, me right. and he's such that's a giant. Incredible. Such a giant. And? A smile dog, just partner. Dino Watt, Kyle Fagula, Mary Sartell, Bill Dissinger. I mean, I, I can't wait to see Delatoro McNeil. I've never heard him speak before. This guy, as a keynote, is going to be incredible. And of course, Gary Solomon, Ashley Kissling, Alyssa Carter. I mean, there's there's so many people. David Harris, Ty Ramsey. Um, we, we have Jill, Jill Allen, and of course, Amanda Floyd. Amanda Floyd's Amanda Floyd's going to be there. And Trent Erickson, who's my personal CPA and leader at. Uh, at uh, Legacy CPAs is going to talk about some really cool tax strategies that most accountants are not doing, but are totally legal and will help make people money. And then Rob Cosberg, I just did a podcast interview with him that's going to drop probably before this one on how to create a book to grow your practice in an affordable way. And spoiler alert, because people probably have already heard it, I wrote the book this year. It took me a year. I, I, you don't even know this, do you? No, no, I, I'm like unveiling this to you. I already talked about it on the podcast, but Sorry. you, so I wrote, I spent a year and I wrote no AI involved. I promise. I wrote an entire book called the straight truth on crooked teeth. I need I wrote, all of the tips from you. Cause that's one of my goals. That's what well, I, 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 you may, I got a greater idea for you. I wrote the book. It's I think nine or 10 chapters long ranging on everything about how to braces work. What's the difference between a dentist yeah. and an orthodontist. Everything is nonpartisan. And no matter who you are or what you do, right, okay. every chapter will apply to your practice because it's not controversial. There's nothing in right. that controversial. There's no twin versus self-ligating yeah. discussion, right? But the publisher of the book, Rob Cosberg, who's going to talk, he's allowing anybody who wants that book, they'll get their name on it instead of mine. They'll get their bio on it instead of mine. And they'll be interviewed to do their own intro chapter. So- uh so the, all the stuff that's information and in it's like having a math book. Everything in there is information for patients, but the book is written by Amanda Floyd and Amanda has her old chapter that she tells her whole story in the, in the introduction. 
And the bio and the picture on the back of the book is Amanda Floyd. So she can get a thousand of them, hand them out to her patients. And it's Amanda Floyd's book. And um, oh, what a cool idea. We're, well, it wasn't my idea. Congratulations on that. That's awesome. I, yeah, it's the only book I've ever written in my life that I can't even take credit for because I can't. <laughs> I check on Amazon and say, look at the book I wrote. Yeah. Because anybody who uses it, I don't want to undermine them. It's going to be coming out at Summit. You'll see it. For those who are going to be at Summit, it's going to be a crazy deal on it. That is so exciting. But, but I always, I, I, you had no idea about this. So I figured I'd share it with you. I love um, that. Congrats. That's awesome. And so I, I was, actually am not surprised in the least that you did that because you are one of those people that you are a doer. And I love that about you. Likewise. you look. We're looking in the mirror at each other. <laughs> I. Um, but my point is the publisher came to me and he said, look, you need to have a book for ortho. And I said, yeah, but I don't want my book being out. He says, no, write the basics. Let people fill in the blanks on their own easily yeah, when they buy it and put their name on it. So that way they can give one to their mom, give one to their dad and give to the PTA, give to their potential patients. And the good news is if you ever listen to the podcast by Rob Cosberg, when he speaks on stage, he's going to talk about how to use the book effectively and tips and tricks he's learned about how to use a book to grow a business fast. And so um, I'm excited about the summit. I can't wait. And I'm sorry, everybody out there. This is me and Amanda, two friends, just chatting over probably some sort of weird juice drink that yeah, she yeah, likes. All the time. Yeah. You drink some weird juice drinks I, all the time. I drink some weird stuff. But Listen, you get this. You you can't be 45 and, and be as fit as you can possibly be without drinking some weird juice and <laughs> and uh, starting your day with you know uh, morning devotional and journaling and workouts, right? Well, you don't look 45. I feel, and I feel my 55. No. So it's uh, it's just such a joy talking to you, Amanda. You always bring my spirits up. You make me inspired to look to do more in my life. And I really appreciate you in my life. And Likewise. Thank can't you. wait to have you at Summit and give you a big hug. So yes. for those of you out there who aren't registered for Summit, go sign up. For those of you who are registered for Summit, but haven't been to Fishbine Fundamentals, sign up. I can make you many guarantees, but I'll make you this guarantee. If you come to Summit and it's not the best meeting you've ever been to, you already know about our free limo. Our free limo guarantee means if you come to Summit and after the first day, it's not the best ortho meeting you've ever been to, I will pay for your limo back to the airport. I'll pay for your flight. I'll pay for your hotel. I'll pay for everything. It won't cost you a penny. Nobody's ever taken me up. I was about to say, I bet you have never had that happen. Never. And I'm telling you all now, I will personally guarantee Fishbine Fundamentals. You go to that meeting and you don't love it, I'll give you your money back. I'll probably go to Amanda and say, hey, can I get reimbursed? But I will give you I will give you your money back. Thank but you'll you. never ask for it, I guarantee you. So well, I will tell you that I have never said this about any other meeting. Or the is the at the summit is the absolute best meeting in orthodontics. I've never said that about any other meeting. Hands down, if you're gonna go to a meeting, go to that one. Well, mutual admiration society here. Thank you, Thank you Amanda, for being here. Wishing you a wonderful day. And thanks again for being on the show and being at Summit. We really appreciate you. We've got several stressors in our life. We've got a great profession, but we've got to deal with overhead. We've got to deal with productivity. We got to deal with team members that are outside of our control sometimes. And the great news is, all of these issues are addressed in depth in this year's curriculum at Orthopreneur Summit. So please go to opsummit2023.com, sign up for the meeting that's almost sold out, that everybody's going to be talking about, that you really need to be at to be your best practice with the lowest stress and highest profitability. OPSummit2023.com. Please join me there so that I can take care of you even better than you take care of your patients.